Hi friends, welcome to our tutorials. We are continuing with our Angular CRUD tutorial series. This is part 10 of it, where we are trying to build a feature module called products for our e-commerce application. So far, we have been able to do a lot of groundwork. We have learned how to create components, services, and also we have used Angular application from scratch. We installed Bootstrap, we created mock endpoints. It's getting turning out to be really good. It's finally shaping up. In this particular episode, we will learn about creating an interface, which is an extremely important part of type uh, script, which is to bind a data type, right? So we'll learn all about it in today's episode. Welcome back. I'm your host. My name is Sridhar. I bring over 10 years of experience as a full stack developer, and I'm here to share my knowledge on modern web technologies. I will share my knowledge on Angular, React, Node, Express, MongoDB, of course, and much, much more like HTML, CSS, JavaScript. I'm here to share my knowledge, of course, but at the same time, I'm here to learn from you. So during the course of this tutorial series, when you are building your own feature modules, if you have any doubts, just ask me in the comment section. I'll be happy to help you. I can assure you that at the end of this particular series, you will be able to build your own feature modules with Angular CRUD functionality. Like I said, again, the best way to learn is to code and let me know if you have any doubts. This is part of the Angular CRUD full tutorial series and the description in the description box, I've shared the playlist link. Make sure you check it out so that you don't miss out on any steps and you get it end to end working in your local machine. Just to give you a recap, we are trying to build a feature module for products for our e-commerce shopping cart application. All right, so we are nearing the end of uh, building the entire feature module. We have done a lot of groundwork if you see here in the screen. Uh, today is the 10th part of it where we are trying to create a model or an interface which we will bind it into a service to make sure that it's always written a certain data type. All right, so why do you need to create a interface or a model? So, so far, if you see what we have done is we have used HTTPs, right? And we have called the API, we get some results. But how do we make sure that it is of a certain data type, right? And TypeScript allows us to define our own data types, which means I can have a data type called product and then export that class and use it, right? So that way I can always enforce that I'm looking forward for certain details, which I expect in the endpoint. The result object should be having the same. So that helps in strict type checking, right? And it's always a good practice to have models because you know the data type and the contracts that you are defining. Extremely important when you're working with multiple team members, offshore teams, or teams which are scattered or remote. So this is an extremely important step. Let's get started. How do you do it? We'll use Angular CLI to generate the interface for us. So we'll give the command ng generate interface and the name of the type that you want to use, okay? It's always a good practice to keep all the models in one single place, okay? But since you're building a feature module which has its own uh, kind of a bundled code together, I can add it into this particular feature module. But usually when you work in large uh, applications, you'll have a dedicated folder by the name models or interfaces and you'll have all the interfaces there, right? So let's get started and let us let me show you how to do it. All right, so... We have our application compiled. We have our application here. If you see the products. Okay, so this is what we are building products module. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tweak a little bit in terms of the routes. Okay, I'll go to the products routing. And instead of saying list products, I just want to have it at the top level itself, right? So what I'm going to do is remove this. And instead of just saying that having a blank page, Whenever user comes to products page, he will see this particular screen. That's what I've done now, right? Looks good. Also a little tweak I want to do is, is in the styling. So I'll go to style.css and I, I really particularly not, um, I'm not a really fan of this black color kind of a layout. Uh, so instead we can take some other color, which is little bright and maybe indigo that will work for us. So if you see, just take this class, it is bootstrap navbar, right? Uh, and it is BG dark. That's the class that it is uh, accepting. So let's go to our header in the site framework header. 
here. So I'll remove this BG dark and I'll remove navbar. Instead, I'll give navbar uh, custom. So this is again a class name which I am giving. Uh, you can give any name that you want to give. Navbar custom. And here I will say background font color should be indigo. Okay, so it didn't apply it. So I'm going to call it potent. All right, so no, still doesn't look nice. Let's pick up some other color. You can pick any color. This I'm just doing it to make it a little better in terms of how we look and feel of the application. All right. Okay, this looks much better, at least the green. And we are going to style this color. And we are going to say navbar item. That's nav. You can leave it as it is also, friends. Like I said, again, there is no hard and fast rule. You have to use certain color, but uh, just if you want to make it look good, it makes sense that uh, you can give these styling. The whole point that we are trying to do here is to improve the application. So I'm just giving that. So here I'm going to say dot navbar brand. Okay. All righty. So we got the slight gray color. Now it looks much better uh, in terms of the application look and feel. So we have the products feature module. We have it here. Let's go ahead now and do the work of this tutorial, which is to create a particular shop for less. I'm going to go to source app. And then I'm going to go into products. And here I'm going to say ng generate interface by the name product. Right? So this will generate as an empty class basically. So if you see here in the products, you would see a model uh, product.ts. Okay. And now let's export the some properties of it, right? So we can say product ID, right? It's Again, say string. Again, these are something that you will customize. You can give anything that you want to uh, mention because it's a just key value pairs. So here I'm going to say description string, right? What does it say? Property should be separated by semicolon. Okay. All right. And then we are going to give rating again string. You can give any anything. So this is kind of building a data type it on its own, right? So we can use number and and similarly, right? So you can go ahead and add product image be a string, right? So you have a simple product that you have it here. Let's add some more. Uh, say category ID number make sure you select the correct one and then you can add some more properties like product pricing category ID description and then you can add say is available I'll call it boolean and then we are going to use um, say product color right um, and then we can also say uh, reviews again I will say number of reviews how many are there uh, description then I will say title product name string right so this is this is kind of a data type now that we want to use in our application so how do we bind it so go to our service and import it. Product. So just import it. Product.ts, right? And here we will import that class. Now it's important, friends, make sure you see it correctly and understand it. Each of these methods, right? I'm telling that this particular method should return a data type, right? Which is an observable basically. Okay. Of what type I'm saying of product, right? 
And remember, whenever you mention the observable product, you have to make sure you are mentioning it in the post also because you are telling that what type of I am expecting, I am expecting a product to be returned. So when we receive or when we post data, it is of type product, right? That's what we are trying to send it here. Similarly, when you would say get, you will say, I'm expecting the data to be returned as product, right? And then similarly here, when you're updating the observable, you will say product. And we'll say observable product, right? So it's important that you mention this data type that way you are allowing for strict data type access. So for all of the methods, let's just import them. Some people tend to import it here, but they don't add it to the actual get call. So that's way, that way it will give you error. So remember, you have to mention the product to the HTTP methods. All right, so we're almost done. So now see what we have done here is we have created an interface and we are telling our service that return an observable. The data that will be done will be an observable of type product. And what does product have? If you click on it and navigate, you see you have product ID. This is the data type, right? So this is how we will define our product and our service is updated. Now we are ready to good to call, start calling into our application CRUD operations, right? So this is how uh, we'll create an interface and models we use in our application in real time. In the next episode, we start implementing the CRUD methods. We'll do some cleanup of UI, make it link all the data together, bind the data, make it much more enriched and beautiful and functional. I hope you are following along in this series and you are enjoying building this. Uh, if it sounds anything sounds complicated, tricky, just let me know. I will cover the topic again for you. The whole idea here is for you to learn. So please ask me if you have any doubts. I'll be happy to help you. See you in the next episode where we start implementing CRUD methods. Thank you so much. See you in the next episode.